Hey everyone, welcome to Homes for Beginners, where I show you how to do repairs around the house yourself. In this video here, I'll be showing you how to patch honeycombing or holes in concrete. We recently had the concrete pad poured for the garage, and sadly the contractor wasn't as much as a professional as he described himself to be. Honeycombing is caused by improper vibration of the concrete, a dry mixture, or the concrete setting up too fast. Parging is certainly an option, however it's a more costly route if you aren't able to do it yourself. Any of the supplies or tools shown in this video can be purchased at your local hardware store. As you can see, there's quite a few spots that needs to be repaired. Some of the sides of the pad will be exposed, and this isn't the nicest look. This is an example of an aesthetic issue. In an extreme situation where any reinforcement is exposed, this would jeopardize the concrete structure and cannot be properly repaired using this method. The pad is only a few days old, so I'd like to do this while the concrete is still green to help promote adhesion. Ensure the pad is dry and hasn't rained recently. Clean the affected areas using a wire brush and a vacuum. The vacuum helps collect any of the debris as it loosens up. Loose debris may prevent the filler from fully adhering to the pockets. Any debris which falls out when applying the filler may also cause some finishing issues. If you have older concrete where there's surface damage or spalling, then you'll need to chisel out or use an angle grinder to remove any of the loose concrete for a good base for bonding. Compressed air can be used to clean out any debris from the pockets. This helps remove any sand which may have fallen into these areas too. Next is using a product for filler. There are various products available on the market. This will be based on your location. For me, I'm using Quickrete Anchoring Cement. While its primary intent is for anchoring or repairing anchor points, its other applications is for repairing cracks or surface damage. This is a high strength expanding cement intended for outdoor use. Mix the cement as per the instructions, so always refer to the product specifications. There will be a certain ratio between the mix and water. Add water slowly for a small amount. This is a quick setting cement, therefore if you mix too much, you may be left with excessive waste. Dump in a desired amount of cement into the container, add water as needed, and then mix using a putty knife. If you find the mixture too thick, add more water. Too thick of a mixture won't fill in the holes as easily and may not leave a smooth finish. If you find the mixture is too runny, add more cement. If the mixture is too runny, it will not hold its full form on vertical repairs and won't have its full strength. The consistency of the mixture should be able to hold its shape for a few seconds and then slowly move. Using a putty knife, apply and force a cement mixture into the honeycombing and pockets. Only apply a small amount at a time so you don't have excessive amounts falling on the ground as waste. Try to do this as quick as possible. This type of mixture does set up fairly quick. I'll show another angle in a moment for a better view. After that was finishing up with a small trowel. This is a pointed style which works great for small areas or tight spaces. Always make sure the trowel is clean and free of any surface debris which may prevent you from achieving a clean finish. I have applied water to the trowel to help smoothen out the surface and prevent the cement mixture from sticking. Another angle, I have already mixed up the cement. I'm working in 2-3 to three foot sections so I don't get too far ahead of myself. This mixture sets up in about 10 minutes so my work time window is fairly small. Once that mixture sets up, it can no longer be used for the repairs. Push the mixture into the holes using the putty knife. This will ensure it's fully filled. When the mixture expands, it'll lock into place. Once it's in place, using a trowel, smoothen out the repair. With a wet trowel, you can work the mixture across the surface, filling in any missed spots. While the repair looks darker at the moment, once it dries and the water evaporates, it'll lighten up in color. In this area, the repair to the right was done less than 24 hours ago. This mixture takes about 28 days to achieve its full strength. A week after, here you can see how the color has changed. Product colors may vary. The surface color will appear to be somewhat darker due to the work with the water and you may be left with some light roughness. In order to overcome this, here I'm using a mouse sander with 80 grit sandpaper. The concrete is harder, so the sandpaper does get used up fairly quick. The 80 grit is rough enough to smoothen out the surface, yet it doesn't leave a rough finish behind as what you may experience with wood. 
After that, you can sweep off the surface to remove any dust. If you do plan on using some other surface type finish, then you'll need to ensure the surface is completely clean of any dust or debris which may cause adhesion issues. After almost a couple months, we are currently experiencing a milder winter with many freeze and thaw cycles, so you're able to see how it's holding up so far. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a like and drop a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more home DIY videos. Thank you for watching.